All right, let's work on this heat transfer problem. We have a plane wall that is subjected to a microwave radiation that causes volumetric heating. And we have a function for it. It's right here. This is the volumetric heating that the microwave radiation causes inside the wall, right? So basically the radiation causes the wall to heat up, just like you would put a piece of chicken in the microwave, right? But it doesn't just heat the surface or the middle or the end, it, it affects it in a certain way. And this function describes exactly that. The Q0, uh, Q0 is uh, another constant. Okay, on the right hand side, we have it perfectly insulated. We also know the thermal conductivity, a small k. And this is a steady state situation and they want us to determine the temperature distribution in this wall based on the constants that we know the x naught x equals x equals zero x equals l thermal conductivity t naught and this q naught right here okay let's get started so what are we dealing with we should know that when they are asking us to find a temperature of profile temperature distribution that means we need to find the function that describes the temperature in this wall so whenever we want a velocity profile we need to start with the conservation of momentum or navier stokes this is not that case they want us to uh, find a temperature distribution therefore we need to start with the conservation of energy or the heat equation Okay, the heat equation right here. Here it is. This is a kind of like a compact version of it and here it is expanded out now a whole bunch of things get cancelled out. So let's see what are the reasons. Uh, let's start with this guy right here. We were told that this is a steady state setup and that means there's no change with respect to time and this is the only term that depends on time. Therefore it gets cancelled. Now, uh, let's take a look at our wall. We are, our uh, control volume gets uh, set up right here between the wall, right? Exactly on the surface of the wall. So everything outside the wall is not included. Everything inside the wall is included in our control volume. Therefore, this will be a one dimensional conduction problem. Now, in this large heat equation, these three terms, they are the convection terms. And since we are not dealing with any convection, we're going to have only conduction. Therefore, we can cross them out. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at the next terms. We are dealing with a one dimensional conduction, right? So that means that the temperature in this wall will vary based on only in the x direction. So let's say I'm going to draw a temperature that is going to be something like this, right? Or something like this. What, what happens? One, tem one uh, dimensional conduction means that if we check it in the y dimension, there's no change, right? It, if we go up and down, it is the same. There's no change. Therefore, we can cross out the y. And also, if we would go deeper into the wall, and let's see if we would... Uh, let me... Let me the eraser don't wants to come on let's see let's say we pick this one right here and if we go deeper into the wall let's say here the temperature profile again doesn't matter how deep we go into the wall it would it would be uh, all the same wouldn't change that's why it's a one dimensional conduction it changes only in one dimensions and that would be the x therefore the z12 let's cancel it out good now the generation term that we need we they even told us that we do have a generation right here 
right? They told us that inside the wall there's a volumetric generation happening. So that is given. We need to work with that. And the dissipation term in this problem, we will not consider it, right? We're just gonna uh, ignore it. That the dissipation is the energy that gets lost as uh, between the molecules as they move or things like that. We are not dealing with that. If the problem would want us to deal with it, they would let us know. They didn't tell us anything, cancel it out. Okay, uh, at this point, that's it. We pretty much canceled out everything we need to cancel out. So let's clean it up. Here it is. I copied and pasted it up here with all the terms canceled out. And this is what we have left. On the left hand side, let's take a look. We canceled everything out, right? There's nothing left, so zero. On the right hand side, we have this term left. So bring it down and the uh, generation term also is left. There you go. Let's uh, separate, rewrite it and separate the constants from the derivative terms. I'm going to divide it by k. That can come out of here, right? Because it's just a constant. doesn't matter. So it'll come on the other side. And here it is. We, I also plugged in the volumetric generation term, right? This is what they gave us. And we arrive to our ordinary differential equation. Now, this is the differential equation that describes the heat in our wall. And in order to find the temperature distribution, here it is, we need this guy, T, all by itself, we, without all these derivatives hanging around. So, in order to get that, we're going to have to take an integral of both sides two times. First integral is going to give us this. Second integral is going to give us this. This is the general solution of the differential equation that we started with, this one. But to find the solution for our problem, we need to figure out these two constants, right? So in or, and that would give us the particular solution. So in order to do that, we need to rely on our boundary conditions. First boundary condition on this side of the wall right here. And that will be my first boundary condition. Here we know that x is equal to 0 and the temperature is equal to a T0 constant. Okay. My second uh, boundary condition is going to be at the insulated wall. And here we know that the change in temperature in the x direction is equal to 0. Okay. Uh, most of most textbooks have a sketch where, let's see if we would have a volumetric generation in a wall, then this would be the temperature profile, right? Right here in the middle is a symmetry line. So that this insulation would be exactly the same situation as us being right here on this symmetry line. And we can see that here, at this point, the curve is flat. Therefore, the change is equal to zero. So that is exactly what we have up here. Okay. So let's put uh, our boundary conditions to use over here. C2 equals T0. C1 equals a Q0 a dot L over 2K. Very good. Let's go back to our... Uh, temperature distribution, the general solution that we have found, plug in our two constants that we just determined, and there it is. We found our final answer for the problem, particular solution for our differential equation, and the temperature distribution in our wall. One dimensional conduction. All right, very good. Uh, please give a thumbs up to the video, subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you.